Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening, everyone. First to some developing news, and the Parliamentary Labor Party has called an emergency meeting at Parliament House this afternoon. Our political reporter, Meg Sides, joins us now. Good evening, Meg. What's happening down there at the moment? Good evening, Louise. Well, they are still in the meeting at the moment, but we were down here at Parliament House this afternoon as the Labor MPs rolled in one by one. It's understood they were informed about the emergency PLP meeting yesterday afternoon, but it's still unclear what it is about. It does come as speculation grows over whether David O'Byrne has the support of his parliamentary colleagues. Mr O'Byrne says he was cleared of sexual harassment allegations in an investigation finalised early this week. We spoke to Labor MP Jem Butler as she arrived to the meeting. This is what she had to say when asked whether she supports Mr O'Byrne. I made a statement last week um, that I support Rachel um, and support her family. Um, I always have supported Rachel and I think she's shown amazing bravery and amazing courage. And Louise, it's expected we will be given more information on what the meeting was about once it's completed. All right, thanks for that, Meg. It might be a long night ahead. The news has been welcomed by Tasmanian footy fans who are relishing the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to watch finals footy on home soil. The doubleheader is set to showcase Tasmania to millions of television viewers across the country, pushing our tourism credentials. The last time the Saints and Dockers met in Tasmania, a dodgy siren defined the clash. Today's meeting, however, had more riding on it, with a potential finals berth at stake for Fremantle. Despite having just days' notice, fans of both sides turned out in force. To see the team play in person for uh, um, the first time in Hobart, is, it, it's a dream come true. We got an email on Sunday morning saying they're playing down here so we couldn't wait to get the tickets sorted out and here we are. Masks and QR codes now the new normal at footy grounds. Fans willing to do their bit. Yeah, I don't mind going on with I'll, I'll do anything. <laughs> the state proving to be a saviour for the season with a record 12 fixtures held here and finals are also on the horizon. It would be one out of the box, it would be extraordinary. You know, under. Uh, no circumstance in the past has Tasmania ever been considered for an AFL final. An opportunity fans are finding tantalising. It would be wonderful if it could. We just need to get behind it. If we want to get a team in down the track, we've got to have the crowds in. As well as local business. Two or three million people across Sydney and Melbourne watching that game. So that'll be a fantastic filler. Great image for the, for the state. And it's not just footy finals on the radar. The state government opened to the possibility of hosting an ashes test if the COVID situation on the mainland continues to deteriorate. COVID uh, you know, can change things pretty quickly, but in terms of the relative safety that we provide, if opportunities arose, and obviously we would look to progress them. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A barking dog has helped save a Margate couple whose home caught fire last night. The pair managed to escape the property before the blaze took over. The couple rushed desperately from this Margate home as it was rapidly engulfed by flames. They were very lucky to escape uh, and were only alerted to the fire by two things. Uh, their dog who began to bark and also a working smoke alarm. Firefighters say an electric blanket in the bedroom caught fire around 7.30 last night. The timber home, lined with pine on the inside, provided plenty of fuel for the blaze. When fire crews arrived, the house was already unfortunately well alight, so firefighting operations were uh, initially conducted from external to the building rather than an internal attack. It took 90 minutes to bring the fire under control. Crews from Margate, Kingston, Snug, Sandfly and Hobart attended. The couple had lived here for 30 years. It's awful to see people um, go through something like this. And the damage bill is extensive, tipped to be as much as $600,000. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. The state government has a renewed focus on supporting Tasmania's children and young people, releasing its first dedicated strategy with a $100 million funding commitment. But there are concerns it doesn't go far enough with a critical shortage of allied health professionals in our schools. 
They are the future of our state. Now the Tasmanian government has a formal strategy to improve the well-being of children and youth. The strategy that we've come up with today, that it takes a Tasmanian village to raise a child, is fantastic. Focusing on 65 initiatives with $100 million committed over four years. It has a specific focus on the first 1,000 days of children's lives, which is where we can make the most difference for them for their entire life. It's the first whole of government strategy for young people's well-being, also focusing on areas including homelessness, climate change and mental health. I think it's also very fair to say that there's a lot more that we can be doing earlier rather than later and that it is actually about going for that well-being prevention approach. Working to enhance health and well-being services that it's so hard to access the services that they need to give their children a good life, to ear, nose and throat specialists, to speech pathology. But there are concerns about whether it goes far enough to address the need for more support in our schools. Today we have a tidal wave of unmet need for allied health professionals in education. Almost one in five speech pathologist positions are currently vacant and in some areas of the state it can take up to 30 days to see a social worker, calling for more funding in the the upcoming state budget to help provide critical early intervention. A child is locked out of a classroom. They might be sitting in a classroom, but because of what's happening at home or because of a hidden disability, they're just not able to engage. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian artist's drawing has won the Hadley's Art Prize People's Choice Award. Martin Rex was described by voters as mesmerising and impressive. His inspiration coming from the state's unique landscape. Hudson Mountain National Park is one of them. There is also Lake St. Clair National Park, Mount Field, you know, and others. So it's, um, it's all of this put together. Judges also taking note, giving the drawing an honourable mention earlier this year in the main prize. Cavaliers are the first team through to the State Netball League Grand Final after beating the Northern Hawks at the Silverdome. In a close contest, the lead swung between the sides before Cavs prevailed by five points. The Hawks will now play yesterday's winner, Cripps Waratah, for a spot in the decider. In the NPL, Devonport is one step closer to a fourth consecutive title after a 3-0 win over Launceston City. The strikers taking just over 20 minutes to open their account. Two second-half goals securing the win, which puts Devonport three points clear of Glenorchy at the top of the table. Meanwhile, Clarence is celebrating after getting its hands on the Women's Super League trophy, the side finishing the season in style, defeating Launceston United 2-1. Jake Birtwistle has returned to competition following the Olympics at the Edmonton World Triathlon Championship final. After a sluggish start in the swim leg, the Launceston athlete slipped back from there, eventually finishing 23rd, more than two minutes off the pace. Stuart McSwain remains in good form, leading the mile until the last 250 metres in last night's Diamond League in the US. Despite the push, McSwain finished second, with a time just three hundredths of a second off his personal best. Alex Peroni has returned to the Indy Lights track in Illinois. After starting in position eight, he managed to make up ground to finish sixth when the race was called. Up next is a round in Orlando in a fortnight. John T. Rinders has claimed King of the Paddock over Kyron Bacon and Seaton Broomhall in the latest round of the grass track series at Deloraine. High entry numbers were recorded, including in the side-by-sides, which were popular once again, and in the junior classes. Good evening everyone. 18 degrees in Hobart today, 16 in Burnie and Launceston and Devonport both 15. Across the state, friendly beaches, Flinders Island and Bushy Park all the state's top of 19 degrees, 17 in Smithton, St Helens and Grove, King Island 16 and a top of 8 in Liawini. A mostly sunny Bass Strait can be seen today with cloud covering most of the state and a line of thunderstorms slowly approaching the west. Across Australia, low-level cloud can be seen streaming over Tasmania, while a cold front is crossing the bite. Low-level cloud is also being directed onshore over northern Queensland. Tomorrow, a cold front moves into the Tasman Sea, reaching as far north as New South Wales, and a trough is moving over Tasmania. A large high is moving south over Western Australia. North to northwesterly winds tomorrow, 20 to 30 knots, reaching 35 knots in the east during the morning, swells reaching 4 to 5 metres in the west and south. And there is a gale warning in place for eastern coastal, coastal waters from St Helens Point to Tasman Island and a strong wind warning for all remaining coastal waters, the Central Plateau Lakes, Storm Bay and Frederick Henry and Norfolk Bays. A flood watch is current for the north, northwest and northeastern river catchments. 
Showers and 13 in Hobart tomorrow, 12 in Dover and Ouse, both with clearing showers. Launceston 15, showers easing there, 14 in Devonport, Scottsdale atop of 13. 13 in Burnie and Stanley tomorrow, heavy falls and 11 in Strawn. And in the east, 16 in St Helens, showers and 15 in Swansea and Ross reaching 13. Looking on to Tuesday now, showers about the west and far south with widespread morning frosts. Light showers about the east and south on Wednesday. And on Thursday, those showers continuing with areas of morning frost. 19 in Perth tomorrow, showers in Melbourne and Adelaide, 27 in Sydney, Brisbane and Cairns both partly cloudy and 33 in Darwin. And it's currently clear across the state with Hobart 16 degrees and 11 in Launceston and Devonport. And Lou, that's Sunday night's weather.